Sorry about that, everyone. I had to go to the bathroom, so I figured my chair could do the intro. Uh, what we have here is a build I've been working on the past few days. It's kind of been slow going, because as you can probably tell, I'm pretty sick. I've been busy with other things. Um, but this is uh, a Guardian, and my main goal with this character was to be tanky. I also want to do damage, but one of my favorite things in PoE is figuring out how to build a character that can tank the biggest heavy hitting heavy hitting hits or whatever. I didn't say that right, but you get what I mean. I like I like the challenge of trying to make a character that can tank stuff that you're not supposed to tank. Tank things like uh, double Uber and Ziri Flame Blast is always a goal of mine. Doing the Maven uh, Memory Game Bomb, the uh, Cirrus Meteor Maze, the Maven um, the Brain. Uh, bomb or whatever that skill is stuff like that. These are these are uh, boss abilities that you're supposed to die to you're supposed to dodge them They're very easy to dodge The game is designed in a way that these attacks will kill you if you don't dodge them But I say okay What if we can make a character that can tank these things and I always like to try to shoot for that once a league or something like that To see if I can make a character that can tank that stuff and a lot of times the challenge is a first of all being able to tank that stuff and then B also having the character still deal damage. You know, that's a hard balance to make because if you have a character that can tank that stuff, you're obviously very heavily invested in the defenses and your offense probably sucks. For this character, I am, you probably have guessed it, this is an Aegis Aurora setup. Aegis Aurora, if you don't know, is a shield that gives you a bunch of energy shield on block if you have armor. So the concept behind this character is basically I'm going to stack some armor via the Guardian Ascendancy, so I get like, I don't know, 3,500 flat armor, something like that from Guardian, along with um, some armor scaling from Determination, uh, a decent amount of armor from things like the Crown of the Inward Eye. Um, so we scale some armor, that way when we get hit, if we block the hit, we replenish a bunch of ES. So that's our sustain. If the enemies can't hit us for more damage on average, than the, the, uh, the HP pool we get back from the hit they just dealt to us, then it's like we take no damage. So you see here, Veritanya, her projectile attack is something that's typically very deadly. I, I specifically rolled this map to be dangerous. I rolled it with a bunch of monster attack speed, unique boss attack speed, unique boss damage. I rolled it because I wanted it to be a dangerous Veritanya to try to demonstrate uh, how strong this mechanic is. Um, so anyways, Aegis Aurora. The idea is if the enemies can't hit us hard enough to kill us, they won't kill us. Uh, it's a sustain mechanic. That's kind of like one of the best sustain mechanics in the game because if you're always healing for more than they're hitting you by and they're never going to hit you for full HP, you're never going to die effectively. The weakness is, of course, dots. Now, another thing I decided to do in this build is I decided to build into uh, Transcendence. Transcendence, I always love this uh, key notable because it is one of the ways you can really get to an absurd amount of tankiness because it allows your armor to mitigate elemental damage and some of the heaviest hits in the game are elemental damage so transcendence is one of the things you can look to to try to get really tanky against that elemental damage so that's what i'm working with here so i'm stacking armor obviously that makes transcendence strong of course we have a weak spot which would be fizz reduction so to deal with fizz uh again since we are guardian we're getting fizz reduction from unwavering faith we get basically exactly at 100 percent aura effect so all of our auras give us two percent fizz reduction i think from this we're getting about I want to say 18% Fizz Reduction, and then Watcher's Eye Mod, we can get another 8% here. I get another 16% um, from four Endurance Charges, which you keep up very consistently if you're fighting, which I'm not fighting right now, obviously, I don't have charges. But you get them from the Guardian Ascendancy from Harmony of Purpose. I'm also doing Glancing Blows Block with Bastion of Hope. Just an easy way to cap out our block. If I'm not attacking or I'm not casting spells, our block isn't capped, right? We're at uh, 68 Wait, no, why is that 75? I'm not sure why, because we're not attacking. Uh, it shouldn't be capped block. Uh, but I guess we're capping somehow. I don't, I don't know, honestly. Oh! Every, every... For Guardian, there's a... The part of the block node is every five seconds for two seconds, you get 50% block. I kind of forgot about that. Um, but, and then for our block spell damage, I cast a spell, which gives me block. Um, and so that's part of the thing there, where we get to uh, high capped uh, block. So anyways, also we have Fizz Taken As from Purity of Elements on our Watcher's Eye, and then we have a um, Fizz Taken As Corruption. So the idea here is we have about, if I divine the Watcher's Eye perfectly, etc., I'd have 20% Fizz Taken As an Element, 
and then I'd have another roughly, I think I'd get close to 50% fizz reduction, maybe closer to 45. So that translates to something between the range of 50 to 60% uh, fizz effective mitigation, um, which is more than enough on a 6k e ES build. There's not too many things that hit harder than 10k uh, for fizz damage. It's pretty much just like the the elder death explosion i can't think of too many things that hit that hard with fizz it's not too common and then on top of that if we went for a molten shell that's another 10k effective ehp which means an enemy has to hit us really hard with fizz to kill us and so it's effective enough to where when we face fizz monsters we're mitigating enough that we still out heal with our Aegis aurora if that makes sense of course this build is not perfect. There is a weakness to the build. That is dots. Because Exoror doesn't work against dots. Transcendence makes your max res lower, which makes you weaker against dots. So, we might be... I set up to be bleed immune, ignite immune, stuff like that. But I can still die to fizz de or ground degens. Um, so, unfortunately, not the perfect package of defense. We can still die to something which is a ground degen. But for the most part, those are things you can walk around, they're dodgeable, it's not too much of an issue. Uh, but uh, I have to be clear, there. this isn't a perfect defensive immortality build, there is a weakness to it. Um, so, And then the rest of the character, um, the fun thing I'm doing is I'm using Leadership's Price, which is, I think, a pretty cool amulet for cast on crit builds. Uh, I like using it because you can get really, really effective Brittle, really effective Scorch, and really effective Sap with just a few uh, passive node investments. For things like the crit node on the tree, you can get 50% ailment effect. From things like the elemental master, you can get 40% uh, non-damaging ailment effect. There's some really effective sources of non-damaging ailment effect. Uh, for example, I have 57% on elevated, the mod on the boots. Stuff like that adds up quick. Now I'm doing cast on crit with uh, Bladefall. Bladefall is a skill that hits a lot of times. It doesn't hit particularly hard. And even with all that considered, with this ailment effect I do have, you'll see on Veritania, I think I will get close to 15% brittle. We'll see. Um, right, right there you see it goes straight to 15% brittle. Um, which means our base crit for both of our attacks and our spells have 15% base crit. Which means we only need roughly about... A little bit less than 400% crit chance to be 100% crit chance uh, capped on our attacks and our spells. And then lowering the enemy's resistances by 30, sapping them so they deal 20% less damage, stuff like that. I think it's really cool. Obviously, there's strong amulet slots you can get with plus two amulets and crafted rares and whatnot. But I just think this is a fun thing to build around for cast on crit. So that's what I'm doing. Now, this character, I have not balanced my CDR uh, or my attack rate. I haven't really set up the cast on crit to be perfect. I haven't capped my accuracy. Uh, I still have some mistakes I need to fix to get the cast on crit procs to be, you know, tuned in and perfect. And that makes a huge difference in how much damage we deal. I think we still do a decent amount of damage given this is a boss with increased HP. It's an A9 Veritania. Um, I still think that's a reasonable kill time. I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is a build that has decent clear, you know, hits the whole screen when you're when you're cycloning into enemies, and then it kills boss at a reasonable rate. So I'm pretty happy with this so far as a build that's super giga tanky and just something different to play, something different to build around. So that's the character I'm working on. Sorry, I've been so scratchy voice uh, about this, but I'll continue to be min maxing this character as I go. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated. Just wanted to make this update video so you could see what I was working on. And uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Peace out.